Hey, Retro Tires, it's Adam Schroeder here with another episode, joined as usual by Zach Lee Master, the founder and CEO of Rental Retirement. And we are pleased to be joined today by two of our investors, Ken and Kara. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi. Yeah. Really excited to be here. Yeah. Hi. So y'all are some of the people we love to, to talk with and about and to. So, you know, I think we first got connected in maybe late October of last year, I believe, maybe early November. And then y'all hung out for a little while, evaluating, doing the things, and then you finally decided to take the plunge. So let's go back to the beginning. And why did y'all wait until the end of 2023 to really start looking into real estate investing? Was there something in your life that kind of touched off that spark or what was it? So when we reached out to you, we had just started getting very serious about moving forward with real estate investing. And we had gone back and forth a little bit about turnkey versus non-turnkey. And I was the proponent that was very much like, there's so much to figure out with real estate investing. Let's start with turnkey. Uh, the way I explained it to our friends is, if you're doing a, a test, wouldn't you rather have some of the blanks already filled in for you? And I feel like that's the way with turnkey investing. So that's when we reached out to you. And then we... Go ahead. I feel like it wasn't too long after we learned about the uh, retro retirement and like the academy offerings um i think for me once i found out about the academy that's when i might have come to you and said hey let's actually check this out and then uh kara is a uh let's do this do 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 and she was already on the website you know signing up and she was like oh i got an email and i'm like what <laughs> i just told you about this a second ago <laughs> like well yeah. if you're gonna do it you may as well do it now i love it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. Playing around uh, with like our investment strategies for a while, and it was just like, okay, you know, we're going to do the traditional uh, stocks thing, and um, you know, we've been kind of reading some books and doing some joint amount of research and uh, following, uh, you know, like bigger pockets. And I'd seen uh, you know, Zach, you on the pod, um, uh, on you know your own podcast and the bigger pockets ones, and uh, yeah, I think it was one of we saw that there was like an academy offering it was wait let's let's get on the rails and let's let's try and do something here awesome that's great the the academy just to clarify for everyone this is our education uh platform um where we we help investors to get started and expedite their investing success success just with a more a structure behind it i certainly want to talk about that with your guys's experience so far but i actually want to take a step back further as well just to understand you know what what attracted you guys to real estate to begin with? Because there's there's a lot of different things that you can invest in. So, like, why why real estate? Do you want to answer? Or do you want me to? Whoa, uh, we were taking a walk through the park uh, like a week ago. We asked ourselves the same question. I think we had very different answers. So, uh, I don't know. You want to take a stab at it? Well, so my <laughs> is uh, so we have two young kids. We are looking. We have been talking about planning for their future, planning for our future what we what we want to do down the line and real estate i think came up to us i well i say through rich dad poor dad he'll say whatever he's gonna say <laughs> and um it like made a lot of sense to us and then i also just have always loved real estate hobbies he will tell you i often make him go to open houses on the weekend just for fun uh, we're not looking to move or anything like that and so real estate like going to look at houses and buying houses and being involved in that world just makes a lot of sense for me and our family, I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, that, that that's definitely it. I'd, <laughs> we, again, like we'd kind of, we'd look at like a piece of, uh, like we'd read a book and we'd kind of go to the other one and say like, what do you think about this? And we'd discuss its merits. And, um, you know, specifically, I think you're probably right. Like we, we probably both read, you know, the purple book and went, hmm, maybe there's something to this. Um, but I mean, one thing that Carol was mentioning was like, it's always been there. Like we love to go to see, you know, we go to open houses on the neighborhood. We're all, you know, we'd be perusing Redfin or Zillow. Uh, so it's always been sort of like uh, this very interesting thing. Uh, but I think I didn't really realize, uh, you know, how viable and actually accessible uh, of an investment vehicle it was until I just kind of reached the threshold of content online. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, there's something to this. Yeah, that's awesome. Real estate is, I mean, it is tangible. That's a beautiful thing. A lot of investing out, out there is is not. 
Um, so it's, it's a physical house. And the fact is that, you know, real estate is, as you mentioned, it's a vehicle. This is, this is a way that I view it where, um, it, there is, there is a cool aspect of being able to own a physical, like housing is really interesting. Also serving, serving humanity and society by housing people there, you know, that there's a cool aspect to that, that a lot of, a lot of people overlook. But then once you, yeah, you go to that deep dive, Ken, as you mentioned, into looking at, and I know you were on the last Academy webinar asking a ton of really valid questions about the tax side. Like once you really go deep into learn all those things, like, wow, this, it could, beyond all these other things, real estate can really be an interesting opportunity to accelerate our wealth and create passive income along the way and like maximize tax benefits. So it's all those compounding things. That's uh, at least I know you're, you share the same sentiment, but that's, that's what keep, keeps me interested in real estate over time. Um, what about, what about investing not where you live though? Because a lot of people, when they start thinking about real estate, they're like, they look in their own backyard because that's what they're comfortable with. You guys, and you're about to close on um, one of your first out of state deals um, here shortly, but you took the plunge to invest out of state. Can we talk about the the mindset with that? Did you initially look out of state? Was that something you didn't consider at all? And how did you get to the point of being comfortable to invest out of state? Do you want me to go? We live in San Diego. It's a <laughs> really expensive market. Uh, we we do own our house, luckily here, but it's just a market that is skyrocketing daily. And so we knew getting in to the market, it's not going to be. It was not an option for us to do it locally. So we were always looking out of state. And well, when we were looking, though, um, I mean, it, it feels like it, I really like this question because it's actually the reverse of like what kind of got you into it. Uh, like I'm looking at this question, like what actually stopped you from getting into it? And, um, like when I always thought of, uh, you know, real estate investing, it's, it was always kind of in the context of it's in your own backyard. That's almost like a given. Uh, so I think personally, like I didn't really realize that out of state investing was even a thing. So that sort of went hand in hand with, uh, like the entry point into this whole, uh, endeavor. It made it possible for us. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of people, you know, that I talk with and myself included, we don't live in places like the Midwest and those areas where, you know, the idea of a hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollar house is just not a thing. I mean, you know, like what with what y'all are paying in Ohio, I think you could maybe get a closet in San Diego. Um, if you were lucky. If if you found it on sale, you might be able to get a closet. So, I mean, it's, it's just one of those things that, you know, as you actually look at real estate around the country, you notice that, oh, my home market isn't normal, you know, especially Californians and New Yorkers, they realize, oh, this isn't, you know, a $1.2 million for a thousand square foot house isn't, isn't normal for people. And so it kind of broadens your horizons when you look outside of your local market and see what is actually out there. So it, it's getting past all those, uh, kind of like really scary uh, horror stories that you get too. Um, I think like that's kind of your world. You live in the realm of like these uh, uh, stories of like, oh, well, I had an uncle that had, you know, you know, a place over here and they had a really bad experience and that's, you know, it, it's a terrible idea or something. And um, a lot of that is, uh, you know, like the availability of maybe where you live and some of the horror stories that can kind of go with it. Um, so it's, it, you know, California has got its own laws and there's other uh, states out there that have their own laws. And, um, oh, so that speaks to us being in California and it not being the most landlord friendly of states. So there's that. And, you know, maybe these other people like weren't really approaching it like a business or they had deferred maintenance or they didn't have property management really set up the way that they're supposed to. Um, but yeah. I think at it, I mean, kind of circling back on the question, um, once we realized that like out of state investing was, not only, uh, you know, an option, but actually a very, very, uh, it kind of doing it the other way seemed a little counterintuitive once you learned how like feasible and viable out of state investing was. I love the way you guys are thinking about this and approaching it because sometimes we can be our, like our own, create our own arbitrary roadblocks or obstacles or be our own worst enemy, right? To like just reshaping how you think about things is extremely important. I've learned the value of that over time more so um more so recently as well just with even with business growth and investing but certainly investing out of state is a big mental obstacle that a lot of people have but of course we try to 
make that accessible for people following a systematic approach based on on what your goals are. What are some things that have surprised you guys that I guess throughout this process, this could be from the academy, this could be just from your own experience, like purchasing, what are some key points where you're like thinking back to a few months ago, what are some surprising things that came up that I guess um, you didn't expect or some things that, that popped out to be uh, that you could share with someone that, that hasn't gone through that process yet? Mm. Uh, something surprising about it is uh, it's, um, I guess this is sort of like in a um, more like social realm, but it surprisingly comes up a lot um, organically in discussions with uh, friends and family. Um, and maybe, you know, friends and family are like a little bit more nosy, like, wait, look, what have you guys been up to? And you kind of say a little something and they're like, well, tell me more about that. And you say a little more and they're like, keep telling me about that. Uh, I think that that's kind of been, uh, one of the biggest surprises is, um, how much interest there is like in our, uh, kind of social spheres. Um, and then also, uh, it's going to sound cheesy, but how exciting and fun the journey has been so far that was a very pleasant surprise um i think kind of like a callback to a little bit ago was when we were like oh and there's like uh we're talking about um like the tax side of things like there's a whole nother uh like i'm a i'm a nerd so it's like it's a whole nother side quest now we get to go learn about the tax side of things um but that they're not uh you know there's nothing really holding you back like the core fundamentals are there but there's all these little uh, different little niches and side quests and things to learn, uh, rocks to turn over. Uh, that's just, uh, you know, more fun. And I... <laughs> yeah, and we just, when in response to what Ken just said, there's at least two other couple friends who live near us who are definitively using us as their guinea pig. Like, oh, we'll wait and see how it goes for you. And then we'll try. Yeah. It's funny how that works, yeah, right? People want to, <laughs> yeah, they want to see, they want to have you take all the risk and then, take yes. the but, um, but it's the people ultimately that, that are, um, willing to take the risk that end up achieving the most, uh, you know, and there's going to be bumps and even the turnkey route. I mean, we, we all know this is real estate, right? I mean, you'll have tenant issues over time and, but, but as long as you don't let that stop you on your journey, then I mean, the sky's the limit and just, you're, you're constantly learning. I, I really view real estate and investing in, in money. A lot of this came from Kiyosaki principles of but thinking about it like a game. You know, if you gamify a lot of stuff um, where, you know, there's there's rules and, uh, you know, there's ways to, um, I, I don't want to say cheat, but uh, be, like beat the rules sometimes, like, you know, especially in the tax the tax setting, like there's ways to get Optimize. ahead. Right? Yeah, there's, there's strategies. There you go. Um, let me, what was I going to ask you? Um, Ken, you had made a comment um during our last webinar when we were we had our one of our um cpas on amanda that did a great presentation and she met her own matt mcfarland yes so they went really deep into some um different tax strategies and and you at the end uh, you brought up a comment around i think it was like the time value association with money or something do you remember what that was can you talk on that I do remember what that was because I talk about it all the time. And uh, my uh, business partner here is probably also tired of me talking about it. But um, so, you know, you, uh, I, I am a W-2 employee. Um, I, you know, work for you know, a high quality employer and uh, I like going to work. Um, and then you do pay a, a good chunk out to Uncle Sam at the end of the day. Um, and... From the standpoint of, um, you know, this kind of goes into active and passive income, and uh, that's a hair that, you know, you can kind of split at a later time. Uh, but the high-level idea here is that if you, uh, you know, have some amount of income and uh, you are able to uh, effectively offset, um, you know, a portion of that, um, you know, like the amount of tax that you have to pay, uh, the value that, you know, you're putting in, like, let's say, uh, you are able to, through whatever mechanisms you're going to be putting in place, uh, offset, like some of your active income, uh, you know, and there, the, it, this is its whole other discussion. Um, but if you're able to do that successfully, then it also doubles the value of how you're working for. It's like, you know, how your employer comes back to you and it's like, how would you like to make double? You know, you go, all right, sign me up. Um, and then another aspect, if you think of it in terms of, uh, families, um, you know, we're living in California. We are, uh, 
you know, a dual income household. Um, and it's, uh, you know, it, it's really important. If, like, let's say you have that same type of income, um, and, uh, maybe, uh, you were like a, you had that same active income, but you were like a single, uh, you know, you have one person working for that, but you still received, you know, like the value of both. <laughs> Uh, it, it, it's really powerful, like the the tax aspects of this. Um, and again, there's a lot of little different ways that you can play it. But the the high level of, you know, tax mitigation reduction, um, you know, playing the game correctly, uh, like that in itself is something that has got me really interested and excited. And, you know, kind of looking forward to see how that journey evolves over the you know coming years. That's the easiest way to give yourself a raise, right? Is, is yeah, you no know, taxes is, um, and that's a beautiful thing about real estate is is a very tax efficient vehicle, um, and the government incentivizes us to do to be investors, right? This isn't about like going around the tax code. This is using the tax code, stimulating Absolutely. the economy, providing housing, and benefiting like we should because of that, right? So, um. I think, yeah, that's, that's something I, I certainly obviously, you know, uh, has, has made a big impact in my life as well. And just a real quick comment on your previous discussion about the social setting. This is something Adam and I really don't talk about often, but I think this is a really important thing is you, as you start to invest and I encourage people to start talking about what you're doing. And it sounds like people are even probing this from you to come up in conversations. This is exactly how I found some of my very first money lenders and partners is just simply talking to people about it. And you'd be surprised how, I mean, how many people you network with that you would have, that conversation, if that didn't come up, you would have never known that they were interested in potentially letting you money to partner with you. I mean, it's so important to talk about what you're doing. And then also you form your own little spheres of like-minded people who collaborate with. I just, I think it's really cool. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I mean, that goes back to the unexpected thing is, uh, you know, community was unexpected. Uh, networking was unexpected. Um, you have this whole new, uh, this whole new sphere of uh, community and network, and that's just fun. I love it. So y'all have two little ones. You're starting to build your real estate portfolio. How are you planning on incorporating your children during the journey? Like how how are y'all going to use this and talk with them about it as they get older and y'all continue expanding your portfolio? Pass. <laughs> well, you already, I went to Ohio recently to see the house we're buying and learn the area a little bit. And my, our four-year-old was like, wait, you'll take me with you next time, right? She, she wants to learn about it. Uh, ideally, we will set them both up for, uh, I don't want to say success, that sounds so too vague, but we will buy houses, um, t teach them about it. So when they get older, they will already have some level of their portfolio figured out and understand why we're doing what we're doing. This is our goal. At least my goal. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I am hopeful that, you know, out of this whole thing, you know, we are building uh, generational wealth and setting up our uh, uh, children for a higher likelihood of success. Um, I look at the news and I'm worried about how many jobs are going to get automated and go away. And, um, you know, I look at this and go, you can't automate a house. <laughs> you know, you can't automate a uh, a living structure. So the fundamentals are very solid. Um, but I think it, uh, like Kara was mentioning, you know, bringing them into the process, um, you know, teaching them about, uh, not just like when I was growing up in the seventh grade, like, Oh, it's a checkbook. Uh, you know, but teaching them about, uh, what money does and how money works, uh, how investing works, how the economy works. Um, so I think that I'm really hoping to leverage this, uh, experience as, you know, a conduit for, uh, their own intelligence and growth. Isn't that a cool thing though? Like, I mean, it's not, it's not about just passing on it. When we talk about generational wealth, it's like, yes, we want our family to be secure financially, but even more important than that, like the true wealth comes from knowledge and experience. Like you can start to have engage with your, your children on that level of, and build that relationship where you can teach them things that will allow them to be, you know, successful and live a wonderful life beyond just giving them this portfolio. Um, we all hear also about people that in inherit properties and just hate it, you know, go through probate. But I mean, the, the knowledge aspect, that, that's a big driver for me. And I know that you guys share that same sentiment. Um, talk to us a little bit about things that you learn in the academy. This is this is not a pitch just for the academy. But we haven't talked about the academy. Um, you know, and this is a chance for people to 
work with us a little bit more intricately, um, have a little bit more of like a structured, the idea is to have a structured plan with some more education going from very basic to high level, creating a, a business plan um, instead of well, alongside investing in rental real estate. At least that's our vision with it and what we're trying to help people set them up for better success with structure. Um, can you guys talk about your experience, good or bad, or I mean, just with the Academy so far and what you've, what you've learned, if anything, or? How to learn anything. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, move on. Next question. <laughs> no, uh, the one thing I feel that was the most helpful that we've learned is in the first, I want to say week or two, you guys keep talking about how the most important thing is to learn by doing. And that is what really got us off and got us we starting uh, in buying the first house that we should close on soon. Uh, the like Just keeping hearing that and kind of reaffirming what we were already thinking about helped. And then just going through that process, even with the turnkey model, I've learned so much about buying a house that I didn't realize before that I just feel like learning my doing was like the biggest thing I've taken away so far, but also that means I've taken away a house. So I guess that's why it's the biggest thing. Uh, but just knowing the terminology, knowing the equations, uh, I was having this discussion with someone yesterday. I can't remember who. And I was like, well, like you want to know if it's a good deal. So you just do this quick one. That's the only reason why that one's helpful. And he looked at me and he's like, cool, that makes sense. Um, I, yeah. So kind of, uh, in terms of the, uh, rent to retirement Academy, you know, we, uh, we've successfully completed, uh, month one of three and, um, you know, over the course of this process, just with month one alone, um, we're already almost closing, uh, you know, on our first property. And I think that that's really exciting. So, you know, you kind of go, oh, you know what I'll do? I'll, I'll take this class or I'll go do this. And it, you leave it in kind of an unfinished state and you don't really return to it. And uh, one thing that's really powerful about this experience so far is that uh, it is self-paced. We've been going at a very uh, a pace that's probably too a little slow for uh, <laughs> my wife here, but it's, uh, I'm maybe a little slower. <laughs> maybe um, you're done with month one. She might yeah, be done right. with month one. <laughs> Um, but it's a pace that you're comfortable with, uh, but you can also execute as you go along and it doesn't feel like I'm just going to start something else and leave it unfinished. Um, you know, we've been able to hit these milestones in concurrence with, uh, the education. Um, and then one thing that I really want to call out about, uh, the, I've been itching to talk about the Academy this whole time. Um, one thing to kind of call out about it, uh, that I found is that for me, this was like. A requirement. Uh, you know, I'm an engineer and I didn't want to enter into a situation that was full of unknown unknowns. And, uh, I wanted a, it not just wanted, like I needed a structured environment, uh, with structured curated curriculum, something of that nature, whether it be from apprenticeship or, um, you know, something else. And we, we found this, uh, this resource and, um, that's, I really needed to feel like, you know, I was on the rails. I was going to do, um, you know, something. And a lot of folks when they're, uh, you know, maybe by the time they find something like this, they've already been looking in that, uh, in that space, like in that domain, they've been interested in real estate. That's why they found uh rent to retirement. They found some of these other resources. And so as you cover some of the material, you know, some of it may be already familiar to you. Some of it might be like, oh, I hadn't thought about it in that context. And some of it is completely new. So it's a mixed bag. You know, some of it is like reinforcement learning. Yes, this is okay. This is good. This is confirming. Like I, I knew, I thought this was important and I know it's important now. Um, so, you know, over the course of month one, like we've got sort of the, uh, like the model, like the core model and we're executing on it and it's, it's fun. Wow. You guys just gave me goosebumps. Um, and I know this is, that, that was sincere, but, um, that's like exactly what we want to do is provide people with, with the structure and, and in turn the, the confidence because it's all about getting deals done, right? That's as, and Carrie, you mentioned this then perfectly. It's about like, Hey, what is the, the most efficient, but also the most structured path to get you into that first deal. And then the second and third and fourth and so on and so forth, because, it's all about starting with a plan and a vision and, and a strategy and then execute, continuing to execute on it. So uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, that's awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. I see a lot. We're, we're, we're thinking about, you know, number two and number three already. Um, and, you know, we're uh, just completed the, uh, 
um, the uh, some of like you know the structured assignments that go along with it. You know, to like give you those exercises, get the muscles warm. Uh, we do take those very seriously, uh, and we're you know ready to like turn the page and get into like the next couple months, do some deeper dives into some of the more advanced topics. Um, but I think that that's just one one big item to call out is uh, you know like we are already hitting those milestones and uh, oh, yeah. we'll, <laughs> we'll get to hear more about this journey you know, as we go. Yeah, that's cool. Month three gets deep. We go like high level. Uh, if you if you enjoyed the last tax stuff, and I know Kara was really interested looking in the self directed IRA, and you were there for that that webinar on education. Like, oh, yeah. we go deep dive into that stuff. So biz, <laughs> business development, scalability, month three. But that's awesome. Yeah, yeah that, for sure. A great example of a tool that we didn't even know it exists, and now we're like, what? How can we use this thing? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. We talk a lot about um, like the mind shift, mindset shift. That happens whenever you go from in you know learning about real estate to investing in real estate. Very rarely have we had a chance to actually talk with someone who's going through that mindset shift, you know, at the moment. So can you talk a little bit about how your mindset has shifted from, you know, just a few months ago or a month ago or so, whenever you were not investors, through the process of becoming an investor and kind of entering into that world of, you know. You're about to close on the house. You essentially at this point are, but kind of how is your, has your mind set changed at all over the last, you know, closing period? Well, for me, I, it's that saying that you hear pre all over the place, but it's not timing the market, it's time in the market. And it's made me want to be really aggressive about our investing strategy. Uh, so that's kind of the biggest change for me. And sometimes he's like, hey, slow down. <laughs> Let's get through this first one first, and then we'll figure out the next ones. But I, I keep having this conversation. I mentioned those two couple friends, and then my boss at work, he's like, oh, you know, in three years, I want to buy a rental property. They're like, hey, here's why you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Make action now. <laughs> and I, I, there was one of the supplemental uh, videos from the Academy that was talking about how, uh, I think that this your second podcast ever, I think is what it was. And it talks about how like in, with inflation, even with high interest rates, like your money now, you're like, you end up paying, if you never refi, you end up paying less than the money you take out. I remember that one. Uh, and I like, I've said to like five different people at work who have said, <laughs> oh, eventually we want to invest. I was like, here's why that's dumb. So you're saying that, <laughs> are you saying that you feel like a heightened sense of urgency? Yes. Like, are you telling your friends uh, you can either buy a property now or you can buy my property when I'm 1031 exchanging it into multiple ones in a few years? I haven't said that yet, but maybe I'll start. <laughs> yeah, the time, and I think that was probably the interview with with Aaron, if Aaron, I'm not yeah. correct, the guy with the big beard. Um, but the, um, yeah, I, uh, the time value of money is, is so important, right? Like time can be on your side or it can be against you, um, but certainly finding a way to to start sooner is, is, uh, only going to expedite your success. Um, Karen, Ken, what's, what's next? I mean, you kind of told us you're, you're closing on this deal. You're working your way through the Academy or you're excited and you're looking at different resources. You're already thinking about scalability, but like what, uh, what's next for you? And could you, if, if you feel comfortable with it, can you share a goal with us that you're, uh, that you're trying to get to? Yeah. Um, I think, uh, so the short answer for me is more properties. <laughs> Um, I, I mean, this is actually one of those items that they talk about in the Academy. Uh, you know, I, I think Adam, it was uh, one of your videos and, um, you know, when you just have the one, uh, that's kind of the highest, most vulnerable point, that's where we're at. You know, you maybe have, um, a, uh, a vacancy or something like that. And, you know, that, that hits you harder than it would be, Like you know, if you had a, a handful and you had a vacancy in one, then, you know, not in the others and. Um, so it, for me, like the short answer is, uh, you know, um, yeah, yeah. Scaling up to more properties, but, um, I've, uh, also been kind of taking a look at this whole, uh, short-term rental thing. Um, that was another one of those things where I thought, yeah, never, you know, <laughs> never touching that, but, you know, now I'm looking at it, uh, through a different lens and we're having those conversations and, um, you know, evaluating their merits and instead of just saying no, just kind of looking at it from a different lens and uh, thinking about it in a different way. And again, um, you know, there's a, sorry, but 
<laughs> what, what do you think, honey? What's next? What's next for you? What's next for us? Before we even got started doing the academy, before we talked to Adam, we sat down together and we both came up with lists, like our goals in the next six months, our goals for the next year, our goals for the next five years. And something we agreed on was we want to buy two to three houses a year over the next five years and get to 10 as quickly as we are reliably able to do so. Uh, we agree that 10 is the number we're comfortable with now, although we recognize watching all of this that when we get to 10, maybe we'll be comfortable with more. Uh, but that's kind of where we're at. We agree that short-term rental is something that we would like to do sooner rather than later. And I think a dream for us would be to have a short-term rental locally because that's just something that we could yeah, maybe in the, uh, manage. Three to five year plan, you know, 1031 into one of those. But it is still... Yeah high market so three to five years from that will be interesting <laughs> yeah there you go um, on the note on the notion of goals um you know coming up with your why uh that's that's really important um you know maybe having a long-term vision but also uh you know having uh goals in the um kind of in the framing of like rates you know like the short term like what, what is like you know what do we want to accomplish uh over the next year and uh, being realistic with those and uh, being purposeful with those and uh, talking about those in terms of rates, like one or two per year, you know, and then once you kind of have that in terms of like, you know, that's not, I'm not thinking 20 years out, but I can think of something that's in the one year time frame. that once I have that, I can kind of reverse engineer the steps and in the individual smaller piece milestones to uh, get there. Um, you know, that's, I've been very mindful of that. Um you know, lately and, um, having, having the offerings is like, you know, it, it, it gives, it presents you with, uh, you know, with those questions, you get to think about it and be honest with yourself and say, all right, yeah, you know, I can, I can take these next steps and, uh, you know, we can get to those individual milestones. It was so, I love that you took the initiative to sit down and discuss goals collectively, because I think that's something that a lot of people don't do or don't do you know, with their partner and, um, that you can revisit those. That is, that's certainly, uh, I think very powerful and it's cool to hear both of your perspectives. Care is very intentional. Like, Hey, this is quantifiable and can you're, you're right alongside there, but with a different perspective on, you know, sharing the same goals. And that's really cool to see. Um, just as we finalize here, you guys, what advice would you give to someone that was in your shoes months ago, maybe even a year ago, when you first started, like be interested in real estate, start thinking about different investment opportunities, but I was also someone that like, can't get past that first, that first step, right? They're, they're the analysis paralysis or they're fearful, or they're just wondering what's going to happen with election and interest rates. Um, what's your advice to those people? I, I, um, I'll, I'll kind of jump at this one first. Uh, so, um, you know, speaking, uh, you know, personally, I would say um, my answer to that question would be uh, be honest with yourself about what is holding you back. You know, if you know something is good uh, in theory, you know, you're, oh, I've heard about this and um, I know I've heard a lot of people had success with it. Um, be honest with yourself and say, well, what is holding me back personally? You know, you, you can know that you want something and that it, uh, you know, makes sense. Um, but you know, there might be something that's specific to you in your own situation about what's your own personal blocker. And, uh, for me, it was, um, you know, structure. And, uh, if I don't have it, I don't really want to play the game. I don't want to get sidelined with something unexpected. Um, yeah. How about you? Well, and I'll answer that question, but Ken, to make Ken comfortable, even with buying the first house, we had to get our structures in place at the same time. Because Ken, oh, our like our business our, system, our, our like systems, our legal entities. Because Ken is much more work, comfortable right? in that sphere. <laughs> I'm the one that jumps out of planes. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Only one. Okay. <laughs> so, but let's talk about. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Karis, the last there. My advice is just to do something. Uh, we just got. We were debating different mentorships and then the academy, and just just pick one thing that feels feasible to you and do it because doing something is better than doing nothing because doing nothing isn't going to get you anywhere. There, Zach mentioned a lot of couples don't have the talk. Y'all had the talk. What was, was there a specific time that you said, you know what, let's actually talk about this. Or was there something that spurred the actual conversation towards 
you know, actually saying, how are we going to attack our future? Because a lot of people just kind of stash money away in 401ks and think, oh, it'll be fine in the long run. You talked a little bit about kind of how you got interested in real estate, but how did y'all start having the conversation of this is where our future needs to come from? Oh, I don't remember. I do. Okay. <laughs> um, so around, uh, you know, we got a one-year-old and uh, around that time uh, when he was little, uh, I was really um, identifying some of my own gaps and uh, I was wanting to increase my uh, sort of um, financial intelligence. Uh, so I, you know, kind of set out on a high and was reading some books and I don't know if you remember, you know, I, I read like Simple Path to Wealth and that I kind of handed over to, uh, you know, handed over to Carrie here and say, what do you think about this? Um, and I, for me, it was, I, I, I could do better. I could know more. Um, and kind of the relationship that we have, uh, is we, I, we tend to not go, Hey, here's this thing. We got to get in on this and like, uh, let's go all in. And you're just convincing the other person. Um, you know, we kind of go, Hey, I came across this resource or this book or this article, this video, uh, we share it with, um, you know, each other. And then we kind of discuss its merits and we say, well, what did you think about that? And uh, I think one thing that Kara really liked about real estate is that it has uh, like multiple benefits to its model in that there's, uh, Zach, you were talking about, you know, the ideal investment. And um, one of those things is, you know, we talk about it and say, yeah, well, you know, I could put this in this tax sheltered retirement body, but then I just won't see that. <laughs> I won't see that until I'm this old. And um, having uh, an investment that has, uh, you know, the multiple benefits and multiple flexibilities of like, well, hey, you know, maybe there's some cash flow right now. And um, maybe we needed, maybe we actually want to just have a vacation this year, you know, instead of reinvesting that into the portfolio. Um, you know, that, that aspect of it was also, um, you know, having that flexibility made it like a really, uh, interesting, powerful, uh, you know, investment vehicle. Yeah. He mentioned simple path to wealth. And if you guys have read that one or not, it's all about like how every 10 years your money will double in the stock market if you invest it a certain way. And I'm like, that's great. I would love for my money to double, but what about like the money now? Like I still want to have some of that. So yeah. That was where, uh, that, that was my hesitation with other vehicles and why real estate was what we really liked. Yeah. Um, so we've got a, uh, you know, this is a business partnership, but it's also, you know, marriage partnership. And, um, you know, what's made us kind of look at real estate was, um, we both said, yeah, let's, let's get serious with our finances. And we didn't strike the nail on the head right away. You know, we, uh, looked at different things and we discussed them and, said, well, you know, what's good about that one? Or maybe what's, what is less desirable about it? Um, and you know, we still have our traditional retirement vehicles, but, um, we also have this, uh, now completely new vehicle and the aspect of diversification is also, uh, you know, really nice, uh, really nice to see that come into the portfolio now too. I think it's so cool what you guys just talked about, about how in your, your partnership in business life and in marriage, just like um, how you communicate with each other. And I was, I was taking notes to share with my wife because I, I think I could Honey. quite a bit on that. Yeah. But the fact that you, you got to get it on the next big thing. <laughs> that's how I am. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a, you know, ready, fire, aim type of person. And um, I think it would serve me well to, to not be so much sometimes with, with my personal relationship. But I think that what, what really is interesting is how you guys are able to collaborate and share like, share ideas back and forth and also maybe uh, collaborate or, or challenge each other is what the word I'm trying to look for, challenge each other on certain things and then collectively make decisions to say, Hey, that's interesting, but we can do better. You know? And I, I thought that was cool. Thank you for sharing that. Absolutely. And the same structures are going to apply too. I mean, if you're in a, you know, a business relationship and you're a, uh, you know, a team of investors and you're having to talk like, Hey, are we still aligned here? Are we still aligned on the three to five, the long-term visions? Um, I mean, this, the same sort of principles apply in both spaces, really. Absolutely. All right. Fantastic. Well, Ken and Kara, anything y'all would want to, any other things y'all want to say to the people out there listening, whether it's about taking the plunge into real estate or taking the plunge into the academy or anything like that? 
I would just say that even the limited time we've been into this, I went out once to visit the property we're buying. I've had so much fun with that side of things that now that we're coming to an end with this purchase, I'm like, what's next? Because I'm already getting, I'm like, I want more. <laughs> I love it. All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. Really appreciate it. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, seeing you uh, over here instead of just voices on the phone. Really appreciate it. If you want to check out the inventory similar to what they looked at whenever they purchased, head on over to renttoretirement.com. That's renttoretirement.com. And don't forget, if you have questions you want Zach or myself to answer on future episodes, feel free to email them to podcast at renttoretirement.com. That's podcast at renttoretirement.com. Really appreciate the time you spent educating yourselves today. We'll talk to you on the next episode. Thanks for watching the Rent to Retirement YouTube channel. Check out some of our other videos, like this one, or this one here.